Jonathan here and welcome to Learn to Playthrough and welcome to my workstation. Today we're going to be finishing the painting process with the painting of the alternate genders. We have the Bandita and the U.S. Marshal. Where I'll be applying their first colors, which are called the base coats, detailing and highlighting if needed, a wash to add some depth and realism, and a basing to give a feel of the surroundings, and then finishing off with a varnish to help protect. Now during this painting process, think of it more as painting tips and tricks than actual painting. For the painting, this is geared towards someone who has picked up a paintbrush at least once. So I'll be painting any miniatures off screen, and then returning to discuss the step-by-step -step of the painting I just did. This way you'll know what you're about to get into. But if you really need to see someone paint these alternate genders from the Shadows of Brimstone's core box, City of the Ancients, well, at the moment I'm sorry to say that I could not find any videos of anyone painting these alternate genders. As for the tips and tricks, these are geared towards all levels of painters, as you can never stop learning. So with that, just go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now before we begin the painting process, here's a question. What technique do you think Freud liked the best? Hmm, tell me about your brushes. <laughs> so we're talking some home therapy here with miniature painting. So unless you've got some good insurance, a psychiatrist could probably get very expensive. And sure, the psychiatrist is only as good as you put your effort into listening to their suggestions and acting upon them. So, why spend all of that money on them and not on yourself? Just think of that new set of paints or brushes you could get, or even that new airbrush system you've always wanted. Assembling painting miniatures can be so therapeutic. Go ahead and just Put on some nice music, anywhere from Dope's Die MF Die to Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera's soundtrack, and just lose yourself for the next 30 minutes. Now don't go and do no speed painting or just slop some washes on top of some primer, as that defeats the purpose of relaxing with miniature painting. Take it easy, take it slow, relax and savor the moment as you lay down a base coat. There's always the chance that you might make a mistake or smudge some paint onto an area that's not supposed to be in. If so, just relax. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold. Slowly exhale out through the mouth. Calm. Don't get caught up in the American way of life. Go, go, go. You know, slow down, put it in first or at least second gear. Growing up, I was always rush, 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 but then I joined the Navy, which was really rush, rush, rush. Hurry up and wait. But then, I got orders to Sardinia, Italy for two years, and boy, did their lifestyle slow me down. It was great. Now, to take in the therapeutic way of painting, I am no longer going to keep in mind how long it takes me to paint these miniatures. I'm just going to go with the flow. So in the end, take your time and be slow to your paints, your brushes, and your miniatures, and they will be nice to you. Well, that should do it for now. i got plenty more miniatures to paint, so plenty of relaxing tips coming your way. First up in the painting process is the Bandita. After analyzing the Bandita, I'll be painting the Bandita in three steps. Since there is no painting guide that I can use as a reference for what the Bandita looks like or what colors to use, I have found several pictures to use as reference, including the hero character sheet. For the paints, I'm going to be using the paints that came with the Shadows of Brimstone Heroes of the Old West paint set. 
And these are identified by the Western Lawman on the front of the bottle. Plus some other paints that I found in the Army Painter Mega Paint Set. And these are identified by the color-filled hexagon on the front of the bottle. So now that we're ready to go, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step one. Step one, we're going to be applying those first colors, the base coats. And there's 11 areas to deal with. So we've got the hat, hair, flesh, pistols, and some miscellaneous items. Uh, the shirt, sash, dress, pouch, boots, and the base rim. For the hat, hair, and boots, we'll be using matte black. For the flesh, we got light flesh. For the pistols, pistol metal. Then for the miscellaneous items, we have the flower in her hair, and we'll be using pure red. For the bracelets, we have shining silver. And then the hat cord, we'll be using dark flesh. For her shirt, we'll be using some spirit white. And then on the trim, on the opening up top, we'll be using the matte black. For the sash and the dress, we'll be using pure red. And then for the pouch and the base rim, we'll be using dark flesh. Okay, so with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and start painting our base coats with... Step 1. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up our step 1 of applying those first colors, the base coats, to our bandita. The base coats seem to apply fairly quickly and I'm really happy with the results here. So let's go and take a look at our bandita to see what we did. As you can see she's all nice and vibrant with her white and red. And there are several areas that colors bled over into other areas, but overall, it uh, seemed to apply and look really nice. We did have a couple issues here. As you can see here between the hat and her back, there's that white area right there. Uh, trying to get a paintbrush up in there, just couldn't seem to reach that good to get all of it painted black. So definitely something to think about. Do dry fitting with your parts onto your miniature. So I should have did a dry fitting with the hat and looked at it to say, okay, here and over here might be an issue when I try to paint the hat and her white shirt. So maybe I should paint the hat and white shirt while she's still on the sprue. So that's definitely something to consider is uh, do a little paint job on the miniature while it's still on the sprue. That way you don't have to worry about trying to get your paintbrush up into the little nooks and crannies to get the job done. Another issue we had was the molding of the miniature. On the hat cord, I had to take a toothpick and then draw a line around her neck because there really wasn't any kind of molding for the hat cord around her neck. Um, going down her chest, though, there's the hat cord, but just around her neck, uh, it didn't seem to be there. So definitely something to look into. Look for all your details and go from there. Alright, on the back, everything's looking good. Just having some colors over on other colors, but other than that, everything's looking really good for our bandita. Well, now that the base coats are applied, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step two. So for step two, we'll be doing the touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and adding a wash. Now for the entire model, we'll go ahead and do some touch-ups to get rid of those colors that are overlapping onto other colors. And then we'll go ahead and do some detailing. Now, there's not a lot of detailing to do, but on the strap for the pouch, there's like a little bit of looks like some buckles over here on this side. And then there's something that's actually on the pouch itself. I'm not really sure exactly what that is, but maybe that's going to be some kind of um, a lock or something for the pouch. So maybe we'll throw some of this uh, 
shining silver on there and we'll see what we can do there. Once that's all done we'll do some highlighting. Take some of the spirit white with a highlighting brush and give some nice wisping across here. Um, definitely the dress with all the folds there is going to look pretty nice because there's going to be a lot of the, the highlighting areas to deal with. And then when we're done with that, we'll apply a wash. We got the soft tone ink here. And we'll go ahead and apply it to her. And just make sure that you don't overdo it, because once it's on there, it is kind of tough to bring the darkness of it down. You know, you don't want to have to go ahead and do repainting, because then that's just wasting time. So, but overall, looking pretty good here so far. Excellent. So with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and continue on with step two. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step two with our touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and a wash to our bandita. Step two turned out okay and we seem to have had an issue that hopefully my mistake will help you all out with your painting in the future. So let's go and take a look at our bandita and see what we did. Starting with our touch-ups, everything's looking good here. We got rid of all those mess-ups that were in the other areas of our paint. And got them all painted over, so everything's looking pretty good. Let's go zoom in here. And there was a couple areas that I left a little bit messed up on her chest with the uh, hat cord. There's a little bit of brown that's kind of messed up a little bit. And then down on the top of her dress and next to her shirt, there's a little bit of uh, the red bleeding over there a little bit. I went ahead and left that because I want to go ahead and try out the trick with the wash to see if that will fix it up a little bit. Now remember last time between the hat and her shirt, there was that space that had some missing black. Well, went ahead and fixed that up. Now, I didn't just get a paintbrush with black paint, just slam the brush in there. I took the fine detailed paintbrush, I put some black paint on there, and then I went ahead and scraped off the paintbrush on only one side. And I scraped it off fairly, fairly well. And then I went ahead and placed it in there with the paint side of the brush next to the black, of course. And then kind of squished the brush down at an angle so that the bristles would kind of fan out. And then kind of painted the hat. So everything turned out okay. A little bit of black ended up on the white, but it really wasn't that bad. Just got a paintbrush in there with some white and touched it up and everything was good there. On the back's looking pretty good there also. All the areas that bled over to the other areas are fixed up, so everything's looking nice and clean and cut. And after touch-ups, we're going to go to our detailing. Like I said, there really wasn't much detailing to do on our Bandita, so I decided that, you know, that pouch, looks like there's something with that pouch, so I decided to go ahead and paint that round thing silver, and then go ahead and cap it off with a little bit of a brown there, so looks like some kind of a a lock to the pouch. And then on her other side, it looked like there was a couple, I don't know, metal clips of some sort on that uh, pouch strap. So everything's looking good there with the, the detailing. Okay, now this is where we start having the issues. Because next up, we're supposed to be doing the highlighting. And as you see here, I've got the wash done. So, where did the highlighting go? Well, I pretty much, I forgot that step. So, I forgot to do the highlighting. So, I went ahead and did the wash. You can see the wash is looking fairly well here. And on her back. The wash is still doing good. It's falling in the creases and it's giving some good depth to the miniature. So, I decided to go ahead and get the uh, Spirit White out and a highlighting brush and go ahead and just start it highlighting. Now go ahead and remember do a little wisp across the perpendicular of the miniature. Now I've done it to this miniature and other several other ones that in her dress you can see there's that 
large gap that's on that boot on the left. Just above that boot, there's that big gap in the dress. And as I was going perpendicular, then I started going parallel with it. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of what the highlighting is doing, because you're not really highlighting inside the low areas. You want the high peaks and stuff like that. So just make sure that, you know, just go just perpendicular to any kind of ridges and details and stuff like that. So on the back, it's looking pretty good too. Now the dress has a little bit on the top side there of some of the ridges, and then down below it gets kind of flat. So, But still, go perpendicular to the dress where you were going perpendicular to the, the ridges before. All right, so the highlighting is done. Now we'd go ahead and go into our wash. And so I went ahead and did the wash. Now the thing is that when you apply one layer of wash and then you apply another layer of wash, the more layers that you apply, it gets darker and darker and darker. Now if you apply it on a dark surface like the dark boots and the dark pouch, and the dark hat and the dark hair, it's not really going to make a difference because it's dark going on dark. Now you go on to the dress and it's really not that bad, but the major issue was the white shirt and especially her flesh. So with her flesh it looks like she went from a uh, washed over flesh to a really deep look. So let's go ahead and take a look at her. As you can see that the flesh of her arms and her face is a lot darker than I would have wanted it. And there's nothing really you could have done with it because other than repainting the whole miniature, um, going at it, trying to remove it with just some water, um, kind of muddied it up, muddled it up a little bit. Okay, so one thing though is remember I said that we had the area between the hat cord and on top of that dress with the next to the shirt. Well, as you can see, it looks like that area got cleared up because of the wash. So everything seemed to turn out okay there. But overall, the, the darkness of the skin is a little bit too dark than what I wanted. But sometimes you're just going to have to live with your mistakes and learn by your mistakes. So definitely remember, do not apply too many levels of washes because it's going to get too dark. On the back everything's looking good and even the hat where I went ahead and did the highlights on it on the top of the rim and then on the top part there so it's looking good but then the wash of course you can see on her arms and definitely her legs they're definitely a little bit too dark. Everything's looking good though. Okay, well that's going to do it for step two. And with our final step remaining, let's go and see what we'll be doing in step three. So for step three, we'll be applying the basing and protecting of our miniature. And for the base, we'll go ahead and apply some gravel on the base. And then got that dead bush probably on the left side there. And some larger rocks. And if there's anything else we can think of putting in there, We'll go ahead and place it in there. And then for protecting, we'll be using that tester's spray lacquer to go ahead and do a matte varnish to, to dull it down a little bit. Okay, so with all that information, spray and other items ready to go, let's go ahead and finish our miniature with step three. Hello there, and welcome back as we just finished up step three with our basing and protecting of our bandita. Step three went by pretty quick here and overall I'm fairly happy with the results. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we did for our basing. As you can see here I went ahead and put the bandita a little bit back farther so that we have a nice open area in the front to put some objects. And I went ahead and took that dead bush and put it on the left and put a rock right in front of it. So a little bit different. Put a couple more rocks there, one in front and one in back. So everything's looking pretty good there. And when you're happy with the results so far, go ahead and put some more super glue on the base. 
and then grab yourself a toothpick and then start sliding that super glue around. Make sure you don't get it over on the base rim so when you have to repaint the base rim it will look kind of tacky. And then definitely watch out and don't put any super glue up onto the Bandita's boots. So then go ahead and take the Bandita and the base and go ahead and put it underneath the gravel. And then go ahead and slide some gravel on top of the base and start stamping it down into the super glue. And I use the uh, end of a X-Acto blades handle. Just stamp it right in there. And once everything's all done, take it out and go and just tap off the excess. And then take your thumb and just run around the rim of the base to get any extra straggling gravel to, to fall off. And then once everything's looking good there, then we'll go ahead and start cleaning up a little bit more. Take yourself a scissors and go at that dead bush and chop at it. Go here, there, up, down, left, right, different angles. That way it'll look like a uh, natural formation kind of a bush. And then I make sure that I take the rocks and set them a little bit farther in so that when I place the gravel in, it'll go around the rocks and won't go off onto the base rim or anything like that. So everything's looking good. And on the back, gravel isn't falling off or anything like that, so everything is looking very nice. And once you're happy with it, we'll go ahead and grab this tester spray lacquer and go ahead and spray the miniature with it and once you uh, apply it it'll look very shiny but give it about a minute and it'll start dulling down a little bit and right now it's pretty much looking really dry and kind of uh, flat looking so it's not as glossy Bandita, all the way from assembly to primed, step one, step two, and finally step three. Now with the Bandita complete, let's go ahead and continue on with the U.S. Marshal. After analyzing the U.S. Marshal, I'll be painting the U.S. Marshal in three steps. Now there is no painting guide that I can use as a reference for what the U.S. Marshal looks like or what colors to use, but I have found several pictures to use as a reference, including the hero character sheet. For the paints, I'm going to be using the paints that came with the Shadows of Brimstone Heroes of the Old West paint set. And these are identified by the Western Lawman on the front of the bottle. Plus some other paints that I found in the Army Painter Mega Paint Set. And these are identified by the color-filled hexagon on the front of the bottle. So now that we're all ready to go, let's go and see what we'll be doing in Step 1. For Step 1, we'll be applying those first colors, the base coats, and there's 12 different areas to deal with. We have the hat, hair, flesh, shirt, badge, and the shotgun. Pistol, holster, chaps, pants, boots, and the base rim. For the hat and the chaps, we'll be using leather brown. And for the hair, we're going to be using desert yellow. And then coming back during our highlighting stage, we'll be applying some dark flesh for a highlight. For the flesh, we'll be using light flesh. And for the shirt, we'll be using electric blue. For the badge, we'll be using loot gold. And for the shotgun and the pistol, we'll be using dark flesh and pistol metal 
For the pants and the hair tie, we'll be using deep blue. And then for the boots, holster, and the base rim, we'll be using dark flesh. Okay, so with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and start painting our base coats with step one. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up our step one of applying those first colors, the base coats, to our U.S. Marshal. The base coats applied very quickly and I'm very happy with the results here. Now when I mean very quickly, I'm not talking about the paint coming off the paintbrush very quickly, but well, let me go ahead and show you what I mean by this. So as you can see here by our U.S. Marshal, her chaps, her shirt, and her shotgun those are in nice big open areas that there's no obstructions on them to cause issues with doing any painting. So with that, the painting of the base coats was very quick. Now about 90% of this miniature is like that, so it's going to be a very quick paint job, so very nice on that. Now there are several areas that are causing issues. Her right hand on the pistol and just above that there's an area that's a little bit of an issue with trying to get the paint job done. Her left elbow by the shotgun that's another area and then we had an issue with the molding of the miniature itself. So as you can see here with the holster and the strap comes up and over around her left side and then on the back it goes across and then it hooks up to the holster. Well, you can see on the front, just above that strap, there's another, what looks like a belt. And I'm assuming that is the belt to the pants. But if you come around the back, there is no belt there. So we're going to have to go ahead and do the old trick with the toothpick and go ahead and draw a brown line to represent that belt. So other than that, we had some basic bleeding of some of the paints to other areas. And... At the moment, it's looking like a very good paintable miniature. On the back here, everything's looking good and nice. All colors are looking pretty good. There are some areas that are bleeding over to the other areas, but other than that, uh, we did have a couple issues here. Uh, one is that missing belt in the back. So from the color of the pants and the color of the shirt where they meet, I'll just go ahead and draw that brown line to represent the belt. And then also her hair, that's just below that hair tie, it's very textured. So definitely get yourself a lot of paint on that paintbrush and glob it on there to get that textured area filled up. And then when you're done and you're ready to paint the shirt, you can go and just cut it in so that everything will look all nice and painted. All right. Well, now that the base coats are applied, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step two. So for step two, we'll be applying the touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and adding a wash. So for the entire model, we'll go ahead and do the touch-ups. So anything that is bled over into different areas, we'll go ahead and fix that up so everything looks nice. And then for detailing, we got uh, some buttons on the shirt. And then on the holster strap and the belts, there's maybe some belt buckles or some kind of clips that we'll do. And of course, we're going to have to add in that belt on the back. For the highlighting, we'll go ahead and highlight some white across hers to represent the rugged Wild West look. And then also on her hair... Because at the moment, we have her hair being painted up with uh, desert yellow. And then we're going to go ahead and do some highlighting with the dark flesh. So that it looks a little bit kind of a uh, sandy colored looking hair. Alright, when we're all done with that and everything's all nice and happy, we'll go ahead and apply a wash, a soft tone ink, to the whole miniature. And I'll try and... Uh, not to apply it to the hair because I'd like to have just the um, highlighting of the hair be the dark flesh and that's it. But we'll take a look at that. Maybe we'll go ahead and apply some wash to it 
or maybe not. So we'll, we'll just check it out at the time. Okay, so with all that information and paints ready to go, let's go ahead and continue on with step two. Hello there and welcome back as we just finished up step two with our touch-ups, detailing, highlighting, and a wash to our U.S. Marshal. Everything is looking really good here, and especially the wash, pulling everything together, giving our U.S. Marshal a nice rugged Wild West look. So let's go and take a look at our U.S. Marshal and see what's going on. So as you can see with our touch-ups, went ahead and fixed any overbleeding of paints into different areas. So everything is looking really nice now. And then in the back here, same thing, everything's being pulled together. And then did the old toothpick trick and drew a line there with the dark flesh to represent a belt between the pants and the shirt. So everything's looking really good. And when I'm happy with all my touch-ups, went and gave our U.S. Marshal some major bling with some gold buttons on her shirt. And also gave her a golden belt buckle and some clips, so everything's looking really nice there. Now, some of the buttons on her shirt are bleeding over there a little bit, but I went ahead and left them like that and I'm going to go ahead and deal with them during the wash stage to see how I can fix them up. So we'll go from there. And after I'm done with the detailing, I went ahead and do some highlighting. So I took some spirit white and a dry brush and just gave some nice quick wisps across the perpendicular of the miniature to bring out the highlights of the miniature. So everything's looking really good. And then I also went and used some dark flesh and did some highlighting on her hair. So as you can see there, we got some dark and some light in her hair. Nice sandy look. Back the same way with the highlighting of the white and then also went ahead and used that dark flesh to highlight her hair so everything's looking really good pulling everything together so once I'm all happy with this I went ahead and got some of that soft tone ink wash and applied it to the miniature started bringing out the details and the the uh, strength of the Wild West there, so everything's looking really nice. So zoomed in, especially on her shirt there. You can see how the, the buttons are being fixed by the wash, kind of absorbing the uh, overflow of the paint there and putting everything back in its place, so everything's looking really good there. On the back, same way, going into the folds and giving it some nice depth and everything, so everything's looking really good. And then, especially the wash, really helps out our hair. It looks really nice. It's got that uh, kind of a rough, sandy look to it. So, overall, very, very happy with the results so far. Well, that's going to do it for step two. And with our final step remaining, let's go ahead and see what we'll be doing in step three. So for step three, we'll be doing the basing and protecting of our miniature here. And for the basing, we'll go ahead and add some gravel to the base, and then put a dead bush, and then some different sized rocks, and anything else we can think of at the time. And then for the protecting, we'll go ahead and use that tester's spray-on varnish to go ahead and protect our miniature against the greases and grimes of your fingertips when you grab the miniature all the time. Overall, it's looking really, really good. So, with all that information, spray and other items ready to go, let's go ahead and finish our miniature with step three. Hello there, and welcome back as we just finished up step three with our basing and protecting of our U.S. Marshal. Overall, it could have been a little bit better here. It seems our U.S. Marshal is a little bit dark. I think that got affected by the spray lacquer somehow. The base though, on the other hand, is looking really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we did. As you can see, I took the U.S. Marshal and placed her back so that it leaves a nice open area in front to put some objects down. 
and went ahead and put the dead bush on the left hand side and put a couple rocks around it and then put some larger rocks around the right side everything's looking good and then when you're ready I went ahead and put some super glue on the base and then took a toothpick and just slid it around made sure I didn't put any super glue on her boots and definitely none on the base rim and then I went ahead and took the miniature and slid it underneath the gravel flicked some gravel up onto the base and then just started snapping it down in there and then when I was all ready I took the miniature out just tapped her off any excess came off and then I'd go ahead and take my thumb and slide it around the base rim to knock off any kind of gravel that was overhanging after that I went ahead and took a pair of scissors and I came at the dead bush so little angles like that upward downward high low around it make it look like some kind of a natural formation of a dead bush instead of unnatural by just cutting it straight across everything's looking pretty good here and then for the uh, larger rocks I went ahead and set them a little bit farther in that way I could have the gravel around them between the rocks and the base to make it look nice and then off the back here everything's looking pretty nice so once we're all happy with that I went ahead and got some of that tester spray lacquer and sprayed down the miniature to go ahead and seal it for protection so that if you grab it with your fingers the oils and grease and grimes won't get on your miniature and damage it and plus if the miniature bumps around with other things it'll protect it a little bit all right well there you have it our US Marshal all the way from assembly to primed step one step two and finally step three well that should do it then it's going to complete the painting of the bandita and the US Marshal now that our two heroes are all in color and ready to go Let's go and get our two heroes back down to the gaming table for some more action.